All right, let's go ahead and talk about chapter 10, data manipulations, okay? There are a ton of important things that we need to learn here. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing that we want to learn about data manipulation is that um, instructions allow numerical data stored in the controller's memory to be operated within the program, meaning what we are going to be focusing on this week are words. Okay, we're going to be looking at full words and how we can use them to move them, to manipulate them in specific ways. It's very, very cool. So there are two classes of what we're talking about. We have the word data and file data. Now, we typically are going to in lab going to focus on word data, just the transfer and manipulation of single words, okay? We will look at data manipulations later in data moving, okay, in a different instruction, although the ones that are presented here in this lab, we will just go over kind of in general and kind of just run through and just in case you ever bump into them, you have a location where you can go and reference them, okay? So, um, Data files will move groups of words, sometimes referred to as a fenced zone, okay? And so you can see here that we're moving tons of them. So these are full words, okay, that are grouped together, all right? Now, so remember we have our binary bits, okay, which are typically identified with a forward slash, okay? Then we have our full words, sometimes referred to as a registry, sometimes referred to as integers and double integers and things like that. And then we have a full table or file. OK, so um, the data manipulation instructions are outputs. OK, this is important. OK, that means they're being controlled. They can be controlled by any input or any set of logic or none at all. They can just be sitting there. That's totally fine as well. OK, just monitoring and moving things from one location to another. OK, um, this allows the movement, manipulation and the storage of data. OK, if we want to collect it for a specific reason. Now, there's a couple things here that I want to focus on. These are all located in the move logic bin. OK, so we have the move, the mass move, which is what we're going to be focusing on today. For our file, this is located in our file in the uh, miscellaneous. OK, and then our compare instructions, which will be on the next lecture. These are inputs. OK, these are inputs and uh, these aren't really data. These, these are manipulating outputs that are already associated with something. We're not changing or moving the outputs themselves. We're just using those words to make logical decisions. OK, so let's talk about the data transfer operations. OK, data transfer instructions involve the transfer of content from one word or register to another. OK, so what basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take data that is stored in one location and move it to another. All right. And we use this on basic programming quite a lot. Actually, we can move things into different registers and the registers we typically are going to move them into. OK, are going to be three things in our lab. OK, we are going to move them into uh, the preset for a counter, the preset for a timer, or we're going to move them into an analog output. OK, which we actually have like in our lab, we won't be using that in the logic pro simulation, but th that's OK. Um, the, the process is still the same and I'll show you how that works, uh, you know, how we could move that into a full word. All right. And so we always want to understand how we are transferring these back and forth. And this is done with the move instruction. OK, this is a very powerful instruction, and this can be used to move a word from one location to another. Basically, you have what is your source and what is your destination? And these can be any word location in RS Logix 500. So this can be, um, you know, you could have a stored number that's just there, like 10 and move that into the destination of your counter preset or your timer preset, all right? And so you'll see how all that works, okay? And so they focus on the N7s. So if you are going to store a word, like a value of let's say 3000, you can store them in the B3 data table files 
but best practice is to store them in the N7, the integer tables, okay? This will allow you, it's not any easier, but typically the B3s are for bits, the N7s are for words, okay? And so how this would work is, if I activate my input here, this would go true, and this would move everything from my N730 to my N720. Okay, so let's take a look at how this works. They're going to input some value here in their integer file. Okay, and they're doing this in decimal for whatever that means. Let's say it's a counter or something. You activate it and you can see that information is moved. And when you turn off that move instruction, it stays there. Okay, and again, you guys understand how the radex works. So it doesn't matter really what it's in. It will manipulate those files appropriately. Okay. And so it will retain that. So if you have multiple moves, it will be whichever the, the last move that actually operated was. And you, that's what they're showing you here. Okay. All right. I think you guys get the point. All right. The next thing that we want to talk about is the masked move instruction. And this one can be a little confusing. The practical applications for it aren't a ton, but they are out there. And I just want you to be familiar with it just in case you run across it out there in someone's program, okay? They use the B3s here, I guess maybe just to show you that you can. But basically, it's the, it moves whatever is in your source to your destination as long as the mask allows it. Okay, and this refers to the action of hiding portions of the binary word before transferring it to the destination address. And this is how it works. Okay, basically, here's your B3. You have a bunch of inputs in there. Okay, then you have a masked word, and this is being represented in a hexadecimal number. So four ones, four zeros, and the rest are ones. So basically, Anywhere you have a one in your mask, that data will be transferred down, okay? So if I have a zero here, it will filter down, okay? I'm sorry, that highlighter stinks. Um, let's try a pen, okay. I have a one here, so this one will get transferred down. This is what it was before it went true. This is what it is now that it does go true. So these four here will allow this information to pass down at the bit level. This right here are zeros. And so whatever was here before will stay. None of this information will pass through. The fact that this state of one and this state of zero is just happenstance, okay? That's just what they happen to be beforehand. And then all of this data, whoops, will be uh, transferred down and you can see these match what it was after, where this is before, okay? And so, that's how the masked move instruction works. And I have a video on how this works, but this one right here will run it as well, okay? I actually walk you through all the setup. So if you wanted to see that, you can. This is more easy to see at the binary level, not the decimal level, because everything gets a little bit goofy. But anytime you see this value here of 6,000, um, 700 or 6, 65,295, that means you're getting ones all the way across the board typically, okay? Nope, I'm wrong about that. Ignore what I just said. You can see that information transferred down through there and it skipped these four right here, okay? And make sure you read about that. This can be confusing for students, especially because the applications are at least, at best, somewhat limited. Okay, so let's look at some examples of the move instruction where we can use just the move by itself. Okay, so um, here you can see that we have two moves. They're tied to a selector switch. And so this is a, uh, you know, this can go to five seconds or 10 seconds. Now notice you put these in 10, in five here, base because your time base is one, okay? If it was 0.1 like it's in Logic Pro, then this would be 150, okay? So um, let's go ahead and see how this works. So 
So you can see as you're switching this, it's moving that preset value here. So it's a thousand because this one is on right now. This done bit will go true when it hits a uh, uh, hundred. Okay, or 10 seconds. Now we're going to switch this. Now this is 50. This will go done after five seconds. Okay, so let's say it takes 10 seconds to fill up a 12 ounce bag and five seconds to fill up a six ounce bag. And so when you're running your six ounce bag, you're going to have it on, you're going to have your selector switch activated. When you're running a 12 ounce bag, you'll uh, have it deselected. Okay. And, and that way you don't have to change up your process. It's just the operator selecting that over, okay? Oh man, now they get really crazy with it. Now we have a counter uh, to let us know when we're full. Now for running, we'll call it widget A here. We need 300, okay? It can box 300. If we're doing widget B here, it'll be 175. And if we're running widget C here, it can only box in 50, okay? And you'll see this sometimes on boxes where you'll see there's a check mark to let you know how many are in there. And that's an indication that they may have a program like this in the system, okay? And this is how it works. They switched it up obviously to five, okay? Now it's full. Now they've activated, now we're running digit widgets B. This is 10, okay, you get the idea here. I don't know if you wanna watch it go all the way to 30 or not, but uh, the 10 works the same, okay? And this is controlling when that done bit is gonna be activated, okay? Oh, they cheated, I guess, and oh yeah, I'm not watching that. So anyway, but you guys get the idea, I think. If you guys wanna watch the whole video, uh, feel free to make this program on your own in uh, Logix Pro, okay? All right, and that's how the move and the mask move. That's how the move instruction work, which is one that we're going to be focused on. Now, all of those were the idea of transferring just one word to another word location. Let it be a B3 or an N7 or the preset for a counter or a timer, okay? These next instructions we're not going to spend a ton of time on, but I just want you to be aware that they're out there. And this is the idea of moving multiple words into a location or moving one word into a file okay this so let's say i had um i don't know 30 3, 000. i can activate this and i can make all of this 3000 okay or i can move let's say i have you know 3000 here 450 here, uh, 6,000 here, I would be able to drop those in as needed and I could keep my instruction a little bit lower, okay? Now, again, this can be a little funky to do, okay? And, the, and they're pretty complex uh, in their programming and how you program it. Okay, I'll try to make a video on this, but again, I want you more focused on the moves than anything else in this lecture, okay? But they do have things like, this is what we call a file arithmetic, where we have our control. If you ever see this, these are typically going to be R6s, okay? The length will tell you how long you want the file to be. This is how many words. The position will indicate if you are going like one at a time. The mode will tell you, is it all moving at once? Is it going in sets? How is it actually working? This will tell you the destination. And this will tell you if you're adding or something like this. This, this instruction has a ton of uses out there, okay? Also, a lot of these complex things, which this is complex, have now moved to RSLogix 5000. And so we're not seeing this as much out there, okay? So um, in this case, here's an example where we will move our destination stored from here into here. And this can be used for recipes and a lot of other things, okay? And so here's our R6, our length is six, our, our length is six here. So you see one, two, three, four, five, six. Our position, we're not going to be worried about that because it's going to move them all at once when this switch closes, 
All right. It, here's my destination start right here. And this is my expression. All right. It's just this moving it over to here. Okay. Um, this is when we're going to move this into here every time this goes from true to false or false to true. Sorry. Okay. And so what you'll see here is this word would move over here. If I activate it again, this word would move over here. This word would move over here. And these are just uh, starting off. Uh, here's my destination. And this is where I'm starting at. Okay. This one works the opposite. Every time this goes to false to true, it will, let's say this is just 3000. I don't know why I keep using that. The first time I activate it, 3000 will go to here. I bring this false to true again. It gets moved down to here, 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 and here. Okay. This is an example of where we might want to copy a recipe into a t timer preset. Okay, so every time we do this, we want this to drop down to here. Here's recipe A, here's recipe B. Here's the preset value, and this will change the length. So for every recipe, let's say I'm making sausage, for example, right? And I understand the recipe that I'm going to be taking in order. I can then change that up for how long they maybe need to be mixed or how long I'm dumping a certain spice in or something like that. Okay, these are located in the file. Okay, all right, that's where this is located right here. All right, now the next one is, uh, yeah, we, okay, and we can do that with the, uh, with the FLL, okay, or the copy instruction, where we can just copy an entire word over. This is just a simplistic way of doing that, and it will just move all those over. Um, you can do this right here where you're just copying one word into all of these at once. All right. And so there's a lot of different ways to do that. All right. And I know guys that this was just a quick overview of how this works. And um, again, I just wanted to give you a reference just in case you ever see those again. We're not going to do them in lab or anything, but just in case you ever see them in a RS Logix 500 program, I wanted you to have a resource for it, or at least not to be totally blindsided by them, okay? But the move instruction is really important, all right? So uh, I have um, videos on how the move and the move masks work, so please watch those, and you'll be doing both of those in lab.